Hi everyone. Today is Thursday, February 5th, 2015, and this is a Utah water supply briefing. This is the short version, and my name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist here at the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City, Utah. So let's get to it. So when we look at the weather pattern and the resultant precipitation anomaly, this is what we see. And this was December 21st, 2014, and what we're looking at is atmospheric moisture that moved through the Pacific and into Utah and produced a very good storm, lots of snow, but the high pressure that's been dogging us for the cold months was a little bit farther south and allowed this system to move through and that's why we did quite well. When we look at the, the actual anomaly uh, for precipitation during December, what we see is Utah for the most part uh, had above normal precipitation all throughout the state. The southwest did not do so well, the southeast did not do so well, uh, but for the most part December was a favorable month in water supply and it had a good start to the year. When we look at the dominant weather feature that has really played a part in our water supply for the past four years, what we see for January 2015 is this very high, uh, big high pressure ridge uh, that's making all of these possible storms over the Pacific, they hit this high pressure and it shunts everything to the north. What's interesting is this is January 2015, so we're just seeing this. When you look back one year ago at this time, this is the pattern that we saw one year ago. And the high pressure ridge goes all the way up to northern Alaska, drops down uh, all the way, almost all the way to the equator, and we see the same type of pattern. Possible storms coming out, Pacific's getting shunted and then dropping down into the southeast. And this is the reason why we have such poor uh, precipitation. Here's the precipitation anomaly for January 2015. And what we see are these ranges of 20 to a 30 to 50 percent range in this dark brown with parts of southeastern Utah doing much better. One thing to note is California, which has endured a terrible drought. Uh, San Francisco did not get a drop of precipitation during the month of January. When we look at the temperatures and we look at the anomalies associated with that, let's start with the Salt Lake City Airport for December 2014. This graphic shows the anomaly. So anything that is in this range of, of the bars going up is 5 degrees above normal, 10 degrees above normal, 15 degrees above normal, and the days of the month for December are on the x-axis. And what we see is above normal temperature all the way to the 26th of December you know somewhere around seven degrees above normal averaging for December 2014 and this is important because when we look at our snowpack it's important to understand that the low elevation snowpack below 7500 feet is decimated because a lot of the storms that did come through even though they're infrequent uh, fell as rainfall and not snow and that's pretty tough to take when you do get the precipitation when you look at the actual temperature, we're seeing these ranges um, somewhere in 5 to 7, 7 to 10 degrees for Utah, above normal for the month of December. When we look at January, what we see is the first, first four days were cooler than normal, and then we resume that very warm pattern somewhere around 7 degrees. When we look at the overall picture for Utah, we do see a grim picture of how warm it's been from December through January. And right now I'm doing this briefing on the 5th and we're still continuing with these excessively warm temperatures that are affecting our snowpack. Any storms we do get, it's raining at about 7,500 feet and below and it's unfortunate. When we look at our current snowpack, and this is as of February 3rd, 2015, this is what we see. And understand that these numbers are measured by the NRCS snow tail system, which are in north facing aspects in tree covered areas, typically at higher elevations. For the most part, they have not been affected by this rain, but it does show a lack of storm activity for the most part at the mid and high elevations with the lowest numbers being in the Six Creeks area, which is just off of Salt Lake County in the mountains to the east and down in the Virgin River Basin. Uh, areas to note, the northern green or the upper green is doing much, much better at 126 percent. And we see um, some of the areas of the interior part of Utah doing okay also. When we look at the resultant water supply, all these factors that we just talked about come down to this forecast that's made by the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center, which is part of the National Weather Service. We're all in the same room here. 
uh, what we see are numbers that are somewhat grim for the Great Basin. And this is the volume of water they're forecasting from April 1st through the end of July. And what we see is 55% coming out of the mountains to the east of, of Salt Lake County, and then 50% coming down in the Virgin. Uh, Colorado is doing much better, and areas of the Upper Green are doing much better. And it's almost a, um, a mirror of what we saw last year, as that high is blocking any storms in most of the western U.S., it does drop down over the Upper Green and into the Colorado Mountains. And that's why they're doing better than we are right here. So there you have it. That's the water supply picture as of February 5th, 2015. My name is Brian McInerney. There's my contact info, my email. If I can give you any additional information, feel free to give me a call. Until then, we'll hopefully we'll get some more storms and we'll do this again in March.